Hi everyone, Professor Gassimi here. In this component of the lecture, we're going to be discussing maximum entropy Markov models. Now, previously we discussed HMMs, and HMMs are powerful generative models for sequence tagging. But they require us to keep track of many probabilities, account for missing words, and it's not very obvious how to integrate new features into them. If you did homework too, a lot of this should be obvious to you. You had to deal with smoothing, you had to deal with back off. There were all these sorts of things we had to kind of take into account if we wanted our models to not break. But if the ultimate goal here is just to tag a sequence, it'd be really convenient to use a discriminative model directly, right? Like a neural network or even just a simple logistic regression. So returning back to the diagram that we were looking at earlier, let's assume that we had the fat cat yawned here, and we, we wanted to come up with some labels for this. Well, one way we could do it is we could set that output, instead of being just a simple sigmoid, we could make it a softmax layer, right? And the softmax layer would then, instead of telling us the probability of um, a binary outcome, one or zero, it would tell us the probability of three outcomes uh, that we care about, adjective, verb, or noun. And a simple thing that we could do to augment or improve this beyond just improve, including our word vectors is to put some features, right? So for instance, we could put if this word was capitalized or not. That might give us an indication about whether it's a noun, okay? Particularly if we're looking at nouns, the capitalization flag there could be useful. And we could add, obviously, several more features to make this uh, tagger, this parts of speech tagger, even better if we wanted. And we could even include the Markov assumption that we spoke about previously by just feeding in the most likely tag of the model from the previous element into the sequence as a feature. So here you can see um, I had fat cat yawned and I had the vector representation. Well, let's assume I kind of passed the word fat through and I got the tag that I wanted T1. Well, now I can just take that tag put it down here and put the most likely class and just attach it into the neural network and include it as a feature for the prediction at the next step, right? This approach is referred to as maximum entropy Markov modeling. And my choice to take the best or most probable version of the previous class label and, and feed it in when predicting the next class label is called greedy sequence decoding. Now it's greedy because unlike Viterbi, which sort of explores or attempts to explore every possible configuration of the sequences and see what is gonna maximize the probability, here we're assuming that a sequence of locally optimum predictions is going to yield a globally optimum result. That is to say, we assume that, hey, if my prediction, if the best prediction for uh, T1 was noun, I'm not looking back once I've concluded that. I don't care if that messes up something about the probabilities of um, T2 or T3 in the future, given the data that I'm observing. I'm just going to stick with whatever is locally optima at this point in time. OK, but we don't have to make uh, a greedy decision with a maximum entropy Markov model. We can also decode an MEMM using the Viterbi algorithm by simply generating an array with the transition probabilities or the probability of t, given the previous t and the word, that's the input. And then we can just follow the Viterbi algorithm as before. So for example, we could take this t1 and we can put in an adjective. And now we have, for a given set of this value t1, we have the t's. Similarly, we could put in the verb and update this array. And we could do it for the noun. And now we have, for each of the three possible outcome states, what um, the T2 kind of tag is, and we can use that and the same Viterbi instantiation to identify the most probable sequence. So the performance of maximum entropy markup models can be improved even further by adding something called bidirectionality. Now, this is just me saying, well, if it worked well to, to borrow from um, the previous time step when trying to predict um, this this particular step. So it'd be even greater if I maybe took something from the future as well. If I took what my prediction was from T3, 
when I wanted to predict this outcome. So I'm, again, sort of incorporating a context window here, right, of what my predictions were for the word that followed this and the word that preceded this. And that idea of kind of looking at text from both directions, left to right, as well as right to left, is called bidirectionality.